It's been well over a month since Nintendo released their brand new hybrid console. With the ability to use it at home or take it everywhere you go, do its pros outweigh its cons? Let's click in our Joy-Cons and take a look at the new Nintendo Switch. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Costing 469 Australian dollars for the console, it is definitely not as cheap as the current entry-level PlayStation 4s and Xbox One S's. For example, leading up to the release of the Switch, you could get a 500GB Xbox One S with 5 games for only $299 in Australia. However, the Switch does something that none of the other home consoles can. It allows you to bring that home console experience wherever you go. This, in my opinion, is a really cool feature. In fact, prior to writing this review, I had only used the Switch in portable mode. The 6-inch 720p display looks gorgeous. You might think a 720p 1280x720 pixel display wouldn't look all that great, but since the screen isn't that big, bear in mind there are many phablet smartphones with screens even bigger than the Switch with much higher resolution screens even. Unlike your smartphone, you won't be pressing this right up into your face, so the Switch can get away with a lower resolution. In an effort to keep costs down and likely improve the battery life, that's probably why they went with a 720p panel. It's also worth mentioning that it is a capacitive touchscreen. That's something I didn't initially realise until I bumped the screen with my hand. Unlike your smartphone, unless you have a cheap one, the Switch does not have glass covering the display. Instead, perhaps another way to make it cheaper, Nintendo have opted to use plastic. This will make the screen less likely to shatter if dropped, but more susceptible to scratching and cosmetic wear. If you do buy a Switch, you should definitely consider buying a screen protector, as the last thing you'll want is a scratch screen. In person, the Switch is a lot smaller than it may have appeared in advertisements. Compared alongside a Wii U controller, you can definitely see that a lot of effort was put into making this a truly portable device. As far as build quality goes, it feels really solid with no flex at all. The Joy-Cons click in place nice and securely, and give you a slight vibration and visual feedback when they are slotted in place properly. The transition between docked and portable mode is thankfully as seamless and easy as it appeared in the commercials. To dock the Switch, all you have to do is slot the console in the dock and take the Joy-Cons off. You can put the Joy-Cons in the provided Joy-Con holder for a more traditional controller experience. In my opinion, the controls are a bit small because I have quite large hands, but you really do get used to it after an extended period of time. The great thing is, you can actually take the console out at any time and it will change to portable mode without needing to restart or interrupt gameplay. Usually Nintendo have a gimmicky feature like the gamepad of the Wii U or motion controls with the original Wii, but this time they've put all of those together in a versatile device that has so much potential. If only they'd included more than 32GB of internal storage. In reality, you get access to around 25GB of that space, so you'll definitely have to purchase yourself a microSD card if you plan on downloading a lot of digital titles. Although at this point there are very few games on the eShop, so unless you're downloading full AAA titles you might be okay. So far I've played Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and have run into very few issues. Once or twice I have noticed that the left Joy-Con will temporarily desync when playing the console in docked mode, however using it in portable mode has been amazing. Being able to take a full console game with you anywhere is really good. Battery life has been pretty consistent as well. I've gotten around 2.5 to 3 hours off of a single charge playing Zelda on the go. Since the console uses a USB-C connector for docking, as well as charging, you can easily use it while connected to a portable battery bank if you wish. I'd highly recommend buying a USB Type-C to Type-A cable for this reason. They're pretty cheap if you want to get one on eBay. I'll link you to some I bought in the description below. Coming from a Wii U, a 3DS, Xbox 360 and PC, I am quite familiar with a lot of platforms. The Switch is brand new and ditches the optical disc-based game medium of the Wii and Wii U in favour of much smaller cartridges, meaning there is no hardware backwards compatibility for the previous generations of game consoles. Yes, and I have tasted the cartridge, and if you didn't know, they actually taste really bad. This brings me to my next point. There are not a lot of games currently available for the Switch. If you have no interest in Zelda, Mario Kart or smaller indie games, there is very little reason to buy a Switch. Yet. 
More big Nintendo releases are just around the corner, and by the time the holiday season arrives in 2017, the Switch will be a very compelling piece of hardware. The soft launch in March of this year really lets Nintendo work out problems and build a decent library of games. In my opinion, it really seems like they rushed it out, and that's sort of why there weren't many games to start with. We'll have to wait and see whether many third-party developers jump on the opportunity to make games for the Switch. I personally don't see why they wouldn't, as the console is selling really well and the user base are definitely hungry for more games. One area the Switch has been criticised in is performance. It isn't as capable as the PS4 or Xbox One as far as raw specs are concerned. That isn't an opinion, that's just fact. I guess that's basically the sacrifice you have to make to have a portable console. Nintendo have been doing a good job pushing the portability factor in marketing. If it wasn't portable or vastly different to the Wii U, I'd say it would have ultimately failed from a commercial standpoint. And I mean, it's pretty early to say whether it fails in the long run anyway, but we'll have to wait and see. So, would I recommend a Switch? Well, if they were cheaper in Australia, I would say yes, but for the current asking price, I would have to say it's really up to you. And if you don't like Mario or Zelda, then no, it's not worth your time. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to help support my channel, please leave a like and give some of my other videos a watch. More content is definitely on the way. Have a good one.